Hello, I'm Michaela Cole and I am here with Elle today playing Ask Me Anything. And apparently I've got some questions from my friends. What up, Michaela? My question to you is, how has your life changed since you decided to get off social media? <laughs> I first uh, like did the delete and then there's like fake delete and then there's like permanently like deactivate. And I remember like going to do the permanent deactivate and they're like, are you sure you want to do this? If you do this, you lose your photos. Are you sure? Are you sure? And I was like, ah, 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 ah. and then I did it and it was weird. It was like, I've done it. And I went outside and I went to a cafe and I sat outside and I thought, you know what, before for some reason I would never have just sat by myself outside in like Soho because I've got all this anxiety and like people are gonna come up to me, people are gonna see me, blah, 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 all this weird stuff. And then I just felt like this is where I live, this is planet Earth and this is nice and this is the air and this is like life looking out instead of looking here. Seth Rogen. Hi Michaela, I'm Seth, Hi. big fan. Um, I was wondering what like the emotional impact is of telling stories that are so personal and at times uh, very heavy. Do people uh, come up to you on the street and just unload on you? If so, uh, what is that like? Uh, is it nice? Is it uh, uncomfortable? Both? Love you, Seth. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of yours. Most of the time when I bump into people, uh, they're willing to share stuff with me because it means they're being very present with me and it means that you get to have actual moments of substance with complete strangers. Obviously there's something that feels like you're expending a lot of energy when you make the kind of work that I make but I don't think I know how to make any other kind of work. I think for me this is what it's about trying to find, you know, deep places in other people. If it isn't doing that, then I probably won't, won't be doing this job anymore, so. If you were to choose Hello. three dream dinner guests, who would they be and why? You look pretty, Lydia. Uh, very sunny. Dave Chappelle. He's very wise, he's smart, he's really funny. Donald Glover, because in many ways, I feel like we're similar. In many ways, I feel like we're completely different, which is what intrigues me about him. And generally, he's a very open and welcoming person with a slight air of mystery. And Lena Waithe. I would pick Lena because we can speak for hours and she's awesome. Hello, my friend. Yes. yes, yes, I am in a bathroom in Budapest. Uh, I May Destroy You is so incredibly self-revealing. Uh, and uh, I just want to ask you how you did it, really. Uh, did you ever have moments where you felt uh, uncertain or self-doubt or uh, you wondered if it was worth it to share all that truth with the world? And how did you bet on self in those moments? Uh, also, I'm going to go take a, a shower now and uh, if you'd like to join me. You know, I think that I got stuck into the writing and the redrafting, as you probably know, there's 191 drafts of the show. So all of that is really a distraction from asking myself those questions, you know, whether it's worth it, will they, you know, will they understand? Maybe I ask myself that. The whole process, you start in this cocoon, right, where it's you, and it's your team, it's the channel, you know, it's BBC, it's HBO, it's my exec producers. It's, and the redrafting is trying to ensure they understand before I'm even thinking about everybody else. I think that feels safer than thinking about when the world watches it. I never thought about that. I didn't, even when I wrote it, I wasn't even really realizing that I would be playing it. How far ahead do you see yourself? creatively do you see where you want to be at 40 50 60 do you think about who's going to be at your 70th birthday party wow. how does it work in terms of the future and your relationship with it love you lots love you too 
miss you. I have never thought about who would be my 70th birthday in my life. I do not think about um, anything beyond the job that I'm doing at the very moment, which has pros and cons because every now and again, I'm like, wait, guys, I've got no idea what's going on and I have no plan. And then I have really great agents who sort of say like, so? <laughs> And I'm like, oh yeah, because like you can make a plan and life will never adhere to whatever plan you create in your head. If you could be invisible in London for one day, what would you do first and why? Ooh, go on a date. <laughs> I'd want to be, be those people that you see and you're like, oh God, get a room guys. Oh no, invisible, so like no one can see me, not even my date can see me. I would probably go to a festival, Lovebox. I'd probably go to Lovebox, topless. What else would I do? Like probably like spy on some sort of like governmental meeting <laughs> to see all of their bullshit exposed. That's what I'd do. Sims. That stories traditionally have a beginning, middle and end, but life is a never ending journey. So how within your writing do you conclude something that in actuality is yet to be concluded? I kind of try to avoid following uh, the traditional story structures that I'm imagining maybe people learn in school. I think I studied storytelling by like looking at life around me. I think if you try to um, remember reality and not what we're supposed to put on TV for people, it's easier to avoid these sort of fake, fake conclusions. Hello baby. Hello baby. That's me sending loads of love. Question, how's Labadi Beach? As Ghana. Brilliant! Labadi Beach is a, is a beach in Ghana that I frequent a lot. And just sit there and watch the sun come up and it's gorgeous. Noma, it is waiting for you. Me and Noma have spent a couple of couple of nights watching the sun go down or the sun come up. Yeah. Oh! Cole Slice, Michaela Cole, my girl. Yes. My question for you is do you still write poetry? Ooh. <laughs> do, I, do I still perform? Do I still write poetry? Uh, no, no. I did write a poem um, yesterday for my friend Inua because we were supposed to go and see an exhibition at the Strand and I bailed for the second time. So when I said, can we reschedule? For some reason, he said, only if you um, tell me a poem. So the poem was something like this. I will plead and will not cease until you something, 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 uh, and something, something will be on the strand, hand in hand, but maybe not hand in hand, but by my side, I hope you'll stand. And then he did agree to go with me. Thank you for watching me play Ask Me Anything, and thank you, Elle. This has been an awesome experience.